So, the Battlefield 5 open beta has now been live for over 24 hours, and it's safe to say that we had a, uh, well, a really rocky start. The entire squad system didn't work correctly, and it took DICE the best part of 4 or 5 hours to fix it all up again. It turns out the game was trying to force everyone on the server into the same squad, which is why in the squad spawn screen you could cycle through every player on the team, rather than just the three other people that should have been in your squad. It also meant that buddy reviving didn't work correctly either, so a major part of the entire game's direction was completely broken for a while. And of course we had matchmaking issues, people couldn't get into servers, we had black screen issues as well, but most of those seem to have been sorted now. Thankfully the team worked to fix it, and now all of those things, I believe, are working correctly. In this video today though, I want to work through some of my own thoughts and opinions and work in some community thoughts and opinions as well on this open beta, specifically focusing on features and issues that I think are causing the most concern at the moment. I think it's pretty obvious that I like Battlefield 5, and underneath some of the controversy that the game has had, there is a really good gameplay loop here. I think the direction this game is taking is a really good one. And so instead of talking about what I actually like, because there are so many things that I could list to you, I'm going to talk today about what I don't like and what the community is a little bit concerned about. With the game being delayed for a month or so, there is now a slightly larger window of opportunity for the developers to act on the feedback that they get from the open beta, so this video will stand as my own submission to their already extremely large pile of feedback and opinion from the community. Okay, let's dig into this. First of all, I want to discuss the weapon upgrade system. Depending on how much time you've put into the beta already, you'll either have found out about this or not found out about this within the menu system, and it's an extremely important progression element that you should know about at this stage. Essentially, in the upgrade menu for each weapon, when you rank the weapon up by using it in matches, you're going to progress through this skill tree. This skill tree offers up different perks, for want of a better word, that changes how the weapon handles and performs. And at certain stages of the tree, you're going to have to make a decision between one side or the other, or in some cases, there are three options that you can choose from. Now this, as a progression system, is slightly different, but the underlying system has been taken from previous Battlefield games, before Battlefield 1 that is, where the more you use your weapon, the more you unlock for it. However, in the past, those systems provided gameplay benefits and drawbacks for almost every item that you could apply to the weapon. So for example, in Battlefield 4, if you applied a muzzle brake to your assault rifle, that would decrease the vertical recoil by 25% allowing you to take more control of the weapon. Battlefield 5 does this as well, but in a slightly different way. Rather than changing the appearance of the weapon, and corresponding that change to a change in stats as well, these perks simply work in the background and apply to the weapon without changing what the weapon actually looks like. That's left to the cosmetic customization system. However, where I think Battlefield 5 is currently going wrong is that these upgrades, and the clue is in the name here, are simply upgrades. And so the further you progress through the skill trees, adding more and more benefits to the weapon, the theoretical power of the weapon increases as well. Battlefield 4 combated this potential problem by providing gameplay deficits to the attachments as well. So going back to the muzzle break, as well as decreasing your vertical recoil, it also increased the spread per shot of the weapon by 30% giving the player something different to think about at the same time. So it created this trade-off scenario. I'll take that reduced vertical recoil, and I'll have to be aware that spread will increase greatly during sustained fire unless I let the weapon reset to the centre of the screen and start another burst. When you then look at Battlefield 5 system, there's a potential here for leaving the game open to issues in the future for brand new players coming in. If you're someone who plays from day one and progresses a bunch of weapons to the maximum, applying these positive upgrades along the way, bespoking that weapon in a way that a brand new player, maybe six months after launch, cannot hope to compete with, then in my opinion that's just bad design. Now to solve this issue, I think DICE needs to implement trade-offs to most of these upgrades. You need to give it a downside to the upside that each of the options in the tree provides. So this will still allow a player to bespoke a weapon using the tree to a specific playstyle, but it will continue to provide the challenge 
further into the game, having to take into account those downsides to the choices that you made. I also think an upside and a downside allows the development team more scope to rebalance things further down the road. If you only have one variable being tweaked through the upgrade system, then you'd potentially need to tweak the base weapon as well in order to come to a balanced change. If you're only tweaking the positive side of things, how do you provide any negatives to the choices that you've made in order to keep things balanced? In my opinion, it's just too much of a positive system and it provides benefit to people who've been playing longer. Newer players that are going to come in further down the line aren't going to have access to these upgrades straight away and I think that might make things a lot more difficult for them to get started. And the last thing you want to do to a player who's coming in late to the game is put them off and then they'll never play the game again. You want them to pick up the game, have fun and get stuck into it. And just another thing, the name needs to be changed if the team were going to implement these downsides. Upgrades would then not match what's actually happening, but considering Customize is already taken for cosmetic customization, then they're going to have to think of another name. Next, I'd like to speak about the current state of reviving players in the game. I think we're all aware by now that it's not just the medic that is able to revive anymore, but anyone in a squad can revive other squad members. The difference between these revives is the timing. The medic is able to complete a revive in 2.16 seconds, and a buddy revive takes 4.37 seconds. However, it is possible to cancel the revive animations as well by simply pushing the interact button at any point during the revive. This isn't immediately clear when you're in the middle of the revive, but a couple of times I have accidentally tapped the cancel button and just jumped out of the revive immediately. And initially I thought it was actually a bug, but after scanning the beta patch notes, it's clearly a feature intended to work in this way. I personally think that more players need to be signposted of this small feature as it could save the life of a player reviving quite often and it provides a get out of jail option if you're in the middle of a revive for you to return fire on an enemy that's popped up out of nowhere. I think at the moment people are generally scared to revive somebody simply because it takes longer than it ever has before but if you knew you could cancel the revive would that change your opinion on things? There is sort of a general sentiment around reviving at the moment where people feel the animations for reviving players are just annoying additions to the game as opposed to actually adding to the gameplay experience, which I can totally understand. But perhaps people feel they're annoying because they take a lot longer to complete than revive systems from previous Battlefield games and they're caught out quite often reviving somebody out in the open only to be shot by an enemy. If more people were aware of cancelling revives, perhaps that would improve the mood around the new system. It's a possibility. Now personally, I don't have any issue with the length of time that it takes to complete these two different revives. 2.16 seconds when playing as a medic is actually a shorter amount of time than it takes to arm one of the bomb sites in the airborne game mode, and the 4.37 seconds for a buddy revive I see that more as a balancing metric to provide to medics who can revive somebody much faster. It still gives them more power than another player who wants to complete a buddy revive. The buddy revive is there to help keep the squad together and if there's time and the area is clear you can take those four seconds to get a squad mate back up. A medic could do it faster, sure, but you're not a medic and so therefore some time increase in my opinion is justified. The reason I mention all this though is because it seems within the community at the moment there is just a general negative sentiment towards the revive system and as I've said I can totally understand that because it is so different to previous games and I think the developers should be aware that there's some negativity here. Moving on, I'd like to talk about player visibility. Yes, I think this is going to be discussion that's going to move on well into the future. DICE has mentioned in the past that they plan to fix the visibility of soldiers issue by adding rim lighting to the players and implementing specific colour palettes to the factions in the game. You'll have already noticed the allied soldiers have a more brown prominent colour and the Axis soldiers are mostly grey and black. It is a subtle difference, but one you notice more and more as you play. I've adjusted already, I don't really find it to be too much of an issue up close. However, it's the rim lighting that I think has players scared. People are assuming you're going to see players running around with this beaming white light surrounding them, which is clearly not the case. This beta build proves that. 
Rim lighting has been used in Battlefield games for a while now. I think Battlefield 3 was the game that introduced it. So it's not something brand new that's here to ruin the experience for you, but for the most part, I think DICE has done a good job here on Rotterdam and improved the experience on Narvik as well. I think both maps still have some darker areas where it is harder to see players, and in some of the busier areas like the town on Narvik and the D-Flag on Rotterdam, some of those areas it's still very difficult to see some players, but overall I do think they've done a much better job. Honestly, nothing DICE do is going to replace the 3D spotting system that existed in previous games. I do still miss the 3D spotting element, I do tap the Q button quite often to try and spot somebody and of course it doesn't work as it did in previous titles. Visibility here is going to be a constant issue for DICE because most Battlefield players are just geared to hit the spot button and then light up the HUD like a Christmas tree, but that's just simply not going to happen anymore. The solution they have right now in my opinion, is a good one. It helps soldiers stand out a little bit more, but I think it's just something we're going to have to adjust to. Next up on my list is the fortification system. I'm sure you've heard my opinions on this already about how good they are. I really do believe they're one of the best additions to Battlefield 5. They solve player complaints that there isn't enough cover on the map. You can simply build it yourself. They change map flow and they can completely change the way that you attack and defend positions. And in fact, they encourage defensive gameplay. After Battlefield 1, which was the most attacking-minded Battlefield game that I've ever played, Played, it really is nice to return to some defensive gameplay here. My issue with fortifications at the moment, however, is their performance and how clunky it can be to get the building process to work properly. So many times I'd slightly move whilst I was building something and the process of building it would stop because I'd either gone out of range of that fortification or I'd gone into the range of another fortification right next to it and it started to try and activate building on that section instead. Building some of these structures leaves you extremely exposed and I'd made it a habit to sort of do a little bit of a strafe whilst trying to build something but here on the Rotterdam map there are so many fortification points that are very close together the whole process sometimes just grinds to a halt when the game can't decide what piece it wanted to focus on based on your position and that became very very frustrating. Now you could say the solution to this is to simply not move about when you're building something, but that puts you at risk of being shot at. You'd be a very easy target if you just stood still all the time and all you did was build a sandbag wall. What I'd like to see instead is a system that almost locks on to the current fortification you're building. And before you go mad that I've said the words lock on in a World War II game, just hear me out. I'd like the game to lock onto the current fortification, so regardless of your trajectory or direction that you're facing, as long as you're holding the button to build the fortification, it keeps building that piece, rather than switching to something else because I looked in a different direction. This would then be similar to how you arm and disarm MCOMs in the rush game mode without looking at them. You can then defend yourself if an enemy appeared because you can turn around and shoot your gun, as long as you carry on holding the activation button for the MCOM. I think that would be a sensible solution to the problem because I have absolutely no issue with lots and lots of fortification positions here on Rotterdam. I think it's great that there's loads of different options for us, but right now the execution of building these things can be rather an annoying experience. It depends on what the developers can do at this late stage, but I do feel the system is still a little bit clunkier than I'd like it to be. So from my point of view, there's still a few things that DICE needs to address for Battlefield 5, but I'm really excited to get back on the Rotterdam map during this beta, continue ranking up some weapons and completing challenges. Let me know what you think of my issues down below, and as I said earlier, if you have any of your own to add as well, drop a comment and let's start a discussion. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.